Before him, and slightly above his head, the hill crest was clearly laid on the sky. Over it slid a sibilant invisibility of wind, like a sheet of water, and it seemed to him that he might lift his feet from the road and swim upward and over the hill on this wind, which filled his clothing, tightening his shirt across his chest, flapping his loose jacket and trousers about him, and which stirred the thick, uncombed hair above his stubby, quiet face. His long, shadow legs rose perpendicularly and fell ludicrously, as though without power of progression, as though his body had been mesmerized by a whimsical god into a futile, puppet-like activity upon one spot, while time and life terrifically passed him and left him behind. At last his shadow reached the crest and fell headlong over it. The opposite valley rim first came into sight, azure and aloof in the level afternoon sun. Against it, like figures rising in a dream, a white church spire rose, then housetops, red and faded green and olive, half hidden in budded oaks and elms. Three poplars twinkled their leaves against a gray sun wall over which leaned peach and apple trees in an extravagance of fragile pink and white. And though there was no wind in the valley, bent narrowly to the quiet, resistless compulsion of April in their branches, then were still and straight again, except for the silver mist of their never-ceasing, never-escaping leaves. The entire valley stretched beneath him, and his shadow, springing far out, lay across it, quiet and enormous. Here and there a thread of smoke balanced precariously upon a chimney. The hamlet slept, wrapped in peace and quiet beneath the evening sun, as it had slept for a century, waiting, invisibly honeycombed with joys and sorrows, hopes and despairs, for the end of time. From the hilltop, the valley was a motionless mosaic of tree and house. From the hilltop were to be seen no cluttered, barren lots, sodden with spring rain, and churned and torn by hoof of horse and cattle, no piles of winter ashes and rusting tin cans, no dingy hoardings covered with the tattered insanities of posted salacities and advertisements. There was no suggestion of striving, of whipped vanities, of ambition and lusts, of the drying spittle of religious controversy. He could not see that the sonorous simplicity of the courthouse columns was discolored and stained with casual tobacco. In the valley there was no movement, save the thin spiraling of smoke, and the heart-tightening grace of the poplars. No sound save the measured, faint reverberation of an anvil. The slow, featureless mediocrity of his face twisted to an internal impulse, the terrific groping of his mind. His monstrous shadow lay like a portent upon the church, and for a moment he had almost grasped something alien to him, but it eluded him. And being unaware that there was anything which had tried to break down the barriers of his mind and communicate with him, he was unaware that he had been eluded. Behind him was a day of harsh labor with his hands, a strife against the forces of nature to gain bread and clothing and a place to sleep, a victory gotten at the price of bodily tissues and the numbered days of his existence. Before him lay the hamlet which was home to him, the tireless casual, and beyond it lay waiting another day of toil to gain bread and clothing and a place to sleep. In this way he worked out the devastating unimportance of his destiny with a mind heretofore untroubled by moral quibbles and principles, shaken at last by the faint resistless force of spring in a valley at sunset. The sun plunged silently into the liquid green of the west, and the valley was abruptly in shadow. And as the sun released him, who lived and labored in the sun, his mind that troubled him for the first time became quieted. 
Here in the dusk nymphs and fauns might riot to a shrilling of thin pipes, to a shivering and hissing of cymbals in a sharp volcanic abasement beneath a tall icy star. Behind him was the motionless conflagration of sunset. Before him was the opposite valley rim upon the changing sky. For a while he stood on one horizon and stared across at the other, far above a world of endless toil and troubled slumber, untouched, untouchable, forgetting for a space that he must return. He slowly descended the hill. <laughs> 